Well, I feel like there's a bit of a letter theme on the show today as we head west and catch up with Greg Hire. Welcome, Greg. Great to have you back. Oh, thank you, Meg. It's, uh, I'm not sure what, uh, what I did last week. I've uh, had a void in my life, obviously. Um, got to watch a lot of great basketball, but to not talk to you last week, definitely. Wife, two kids, not talking to Megan Huthwaite, um, definitely a void. But I'm excited. It's been a sensational weekend of basketball. It has been. I'm excited you're back. Let's continue with the W theme. So W for West, W for Whitcomb and Willerton. Mate, she's been absolutely sensational. What do you expect from someone that's about to depart our shores to play for the Seattle Storm? Um, she's playing incredible basketball. She had 35 points, eight rebounds, six assists. The uh, the Wollaston Tigers hot house, or whatever they might call it, was jam packed, and it was all for Sammy Wickham. She's an absolute stud, um, or studette, sorry. Um, her and uh, Alex Sharp, they just uh, are forming this incredible duo. A um, bit of a shame that obviously she's going to leave, but such a dominating performance and an ab- absolute privilege for WA basketballers. It's a privilege for WA basketball, but our competition as a whole to have players that have represented their country, played in the WNBA, the NBA, to be back on their home turf playing for you know their original clubs. It's such a good story. The Rockingham Flames have a good story though because they are on the board. Yeah, absolutely massive, um, and the whole. Uh, realm of things, they're going to be facing a 0-4 and four, um, record and for a team, uh, an outfit that recruited immensely in the off-season, there was certainly some pressure around Tom Knowles and they played East Perth Eagles who have been playing pretty well this year, um, you know, in terms of that roster, Matty Allen was a player that uh, joined from East Perth but an overtime win um, and they really needed it um, Definitely some, some pressure externally and internally on how they would actually respond. Um, and so in order for that, um, Casey Samuels, incredible effort, um, over 30 points, uh, doubled, you know, that's a player that needs to stand up, one of those boom recruits. Taylor Evans uh, obviously joined in the out- outfit that was at Darwin Salty's last year, uh, another outfit that sort of will come into this group. But huge, huge win for that uh, very proud organisation. And another huge win for the Joondalup Wolves. That train is uh, rolling and uh, it could be stopping all stations to a conference final at this rate. I can't see where they will get beat in, an, in the formidable, formidable future. I mean, they, they go against Perth Roadbacks and Bunbury Slammers, who um, I don't think have, have a win yet this season. Tej Morol, um, spoken, uh, Chris Pike sort of mentioned. On that cusp of a WNBL player, just it's interesting whether her play um, can translate to that WNBL court. But um, Robbie Ryan, um, an absolute incredible player. Her form continues. And then Ashaya Parker-Williams, who was at the Townsville mm-hmm. Fire, obviously we know what they did last year, just gaining that experience under Shannon Seabom. So, um, yeah, that train continues. I mean, they're 3-0 and, and they haven't been tested as such, but beating Eastern Suns, who um, are definitely an improved lineup as well, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see when will that, that first loss actually happen. Now, you've mentioned Sammy Wickham, Alex Sharp and Casey Samuels. Who are some of your other standout performers from the weekend's action, Greg? Yeah, the Danish import of the Kerbin Kumis, Sarah Mortensen, uh, Mortensen. They only had one game. Kerbin is still playing really well. She had a really um, standout performance, scoring over 30 points. Uh, Emma Clark, Perry Lakes, split the weekend, um, but a huge weekend on the back end. Um, she's, she's certainly um, playing high level. I think, I guess, all... Um, NBL level first team in, in that regard. Her consistency needs to improve in those big games where they lose. She sort of um, doesn't play as well. Um, and then, um, sorry, Emma Clark, and then Olivia Berry from the Goldfield Gi- Giants. Um, yeah, again, a split the game, but she played really well. And um, for Goldfield, the team that's sort of you know it's very fresh in the organ, sorry, in the league and and uh, itself. Um, good for her to have a really uh, strong game. Let's move on to the men's action now because the heat is on. It's only a few rounds in, but one of the teams feeling the heat is the Cougars. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Meg. Just like we mentioned that it was, I guess, pun intended, the monkey off the back for Rockingham Flames. Kerbin is definitely feeling it right now. If that men's side uh, spoke about it in week one, Courtney Alexander, um, high reputation in crew. 
um, not playing to the level that I guess they expected him to. And they're now they're sitting at 0-4 and four after dropping two games this weekend, and they're going to verse the Rockingham Flames who are 4-0. and oh. um, So that little rivalry is going to be pretty big for them. And um, I'm not sure if alarm bells is the right word, but you don't want to be sitting at 0-5. and five when mm. Pre-season, they were looking at as championship contenders. Um, and, you know, what I think compounded, they lose that game against Lakeside on Friday night or uh, Saturday night, if I'm correct. They get absolutely trounced against the Geraldton Buccaneers by over 40 points or near 40 points on their home court. Um, for me, there's enough to say, geez, what is going on with that team? And I'm not a negative Nancy, to say the least, but I'd definitely be fearful if I was a, a Coburn Cougars fan. Yeah, it's a definite watch this space on the Coburn Cougars. Let's move on to the Eastern Suns because it was a shot in the arm for them at the weekend. Got to love it. Um, you know, give a little bit of storyline. Three players uh, moved to the Eastern Suns last year. Seb Slinas, Reese Maxwell and Robbie Huntington. Combined, I think they put, would have played over 1,000 NBL 1 games. Uh, the Junilup Wolves changed their coach, didn't believe in, I guess, those leaders. Um, and so I guess a little bit of revenge uh, for that team. They, they beat them um, on Friday night. Um, massive game. Like, it was huge to, to get that. Eastern Suns now um, win two games in a row on, on the weekend. They, they uh, on the back end of that doubleheader, beat Bunbury Slammers, who they're expected to. So Joe Cook-Green, um, and, and we'll speak about him in, in, a, in a bit, standout performer. Um, you know, double digits assist um, against Junlup. Um, uh, against the Wolves, um, a New Zealand recruit. Um, he's certainly a guy that I think um, NBL clubs will be looking at and monitoring. Um, if you think Marshall Nelson at Rockingham Flames, you're thinking uh, Marshall Nelson light. Um, and so he was he was really sensational. But pleasing to see that club up in the hills go 2-0 uh, and especially beat a team that, um, you know, I guess those vets um, would be pretty chuffed to, to go against the, their old club. You had me at Marshall Nelson Light, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's move on to Lakeside because they had what was a bit of a defining weekend. Massive. Mike Malat's a, a, a brand new head coach. Um, you know, again mentioned they versed Coburn Cougars, um, and they had a really good performance to get that win. But I think that would have meant nothing if they didn't back it up um, against the Goldfield Giants, and they did. Cole Armour uh, certainly ran back to time. He's a maybe a 300-350 game uh, vet for the NBL 1, but he's returned after playing for Mandra Magic last year. He had a sensational game, over 30 points against Goldfield. Um, but certainly Hayden Brown was a stud um, throughout this weekend. Um, new recruit for the Lakeside Lightning, but um, again, like you know, they started the year um, unconvincing and, and lost the game. You would understand that with Mike Malat, um, new coach who came across from Adelaide last year. So for them, um, they've got a pretty uh, good schedule this week. Like they're going to be looking at three and two at the end of this weekend. And for a club that is certainly proud, they're they're a renowned championship winning organisation. Um, this is going to do a world of positives for that uh, for that organisation and outfit. And finally, Ryan Patrick's Rockingham Flames are the only men's team left undefeated. We're still early on in the season, but there's some crunch games coming up this round, Greg. I absolutely love, uh, I guess, the parity in the league. And we always see that across, you know, not only the NBL, but the NBA. Like, you're going to see those top teams. You're right. Like, there's only been one uh, club, which is the Rockingham Flames, the NBL one West champions that remain undefeated. Um, but absolutely incredible to see that across the board. There's some massive games this weekend when we're looking at it. You've got uh, Geraldton versus uh, Sterling Senators. They're two championship contending teams. You've got... Um, the Flames and Coburn 0 and 4 versus 4 and 0, um, and you're looking at that. The Wolves and Redbacks, another two teams. Again, way too early to say seasons are fining, no doubt. But it's you're looking at week three, week four. Um, you want to see where you're at as an organisation. There's new recruits, and if any of those clubs, the Redbacks, the Wolves, the, uh, the Senators, and the Buccaneers, Buccaneers know their championship contenders, no doubt about that. Zach Katorna showed he was absolutely sensational again. But mm. for those three other teams to go, yeah, we're definitely contending. They need to start winning these games because what we're loving is the parity that anyone, as we love in sports, is anyone can beat anyone on any given night. But that lack of consistency is really hurting those teams. It's going to be a fascinating weekend, that's for sure, Greg. You mentioned Joe Cook Green. I'm sure he probably leads your standout performers from the round we just completed. 
Yeah, Hayden Brown from Lakeside again. He would be my nod for maybe player of the week, so hopefully the, the team here at the NBL 1 don't hurt me. But Quinton Dove, um, he is second in scoring at the moment for the NBL 1. Quinton Dove from the June Love Wolves. Um, energy, he is sensational. They've lost Julian Passava last year. Um, you know, to complement CJ Turnage, who was an uh, All-NBL first team, Quinton Doves has fit that mould perfectly. Um, and so um, he would be, uh, obviously that split, but he's been, an, an, I guess, the perfect accomplice to Batman, which is CJ, and he can be Robin. Um, so when we're talking light, um, yeah, he's definitely uh, a light model of, of, of Robin right there. I'd just like to be your Robin um, to you, Greg Hire Batman. Uh, you are the oh, best geez. in the world. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Great job and we'll see you next week. Thanks, mate. Take care.